Australia is a vast country with most of our population living near the coast. Here in our cities we have unparalleled access to builders and building materials. But it's a very different story for those who are living in remote areas. On today's episode, we follow the fascinating journey of the design and the construction of a house that is built in a factory and then shipped out to the middle of nowhere. We meet the wheat farmers who need housing in their delightful small town and the people who have the solutions. Join us as we hit the road with a house on the back of a truck. This is Before and After. Narrabeen sits about four hours drive east of Perth in the Wheatbelt region of Western Australia. The town sprung up around the pub which was built there in about 1922. The Narrabeen Hotel still stands today. The town is home to about 500 people and the spirit of the arid land, wheat crops and pastoral farms runs deep in their blood. We meet Nat and Carl. They are wheat farmers from just down the road and need to build a house for Carl's sister. To do that, they've approached TR Homes in Maddington in Perth. One of the things that I like about the prefabricated housing industry and the reason why I suppose mainly I got into it, um, I did spend a lot of time living in WA, in country WA in a town called Bustleton when I was younger. And there was a real lack of builders, real lack of choice and I found it exciting getting involved in prefabricated housing because it is a great solution. Generally when people first inquire about prefabricated homes they're really thinking it's, it's like a mining donger, like it's, it's what you'd find in a workers camp. When we get them into our yard here, into our display village here in Maddington and also in the Northern Territory, they're generally surprised. Um, the quality is as good as, if not better, than your traditional house that you'd find if you built a brick and tile home. The concept of prefab has often been referred to as architecture's oldest new idea. Since the days of the Roman Empire up until now, some form of prefab building method has been used to provide housing. During the post-war era of the 40s and the 50s, a need for quick and cheap housing solutions saw mass-produced utilitarian-style houses. The stigma for this four walls and a roof concept of prefab still lingers today. But in recent times, technological improvements combined with innovative design has given prefab a new and exciting look. Along with great sustainability features, the prefab has once again become an important player in the future of the building industry. The prefab home is made up of modules. So with a traditional house as such, you, you build it in one big, big block, so to speak, whereas with a prefabricated home, it actually comes in various modules. So depending on the size of the dwelling you're looking for, it'll either come in a module of say one, or it could be two, it could be three modules, four, or even five or six. So it really does depend on the size of the home that you're looking for. The great thing about, about building prefabricated homes in our factory is that um, you've got quality control here in one place. Um, we can control every trade. So we can watch literally the home as it's going up, but we can make sure the quality of the workmanship is spot on, it's perfect, right the way through to the end of the build. So everything's done here. You know, we're not having to wait on trades coming to site. We, we use a manufacturing technique. So from that point of view, literally one trade follows the other. So the speed of how we build a prefabricated home versus a traditional home is also much quicker. So there's various designs and um, styles that um, our clients can choose from. We have one bedroom designs that can be used as small granny flats, up to your large two, three and four bedroom and even five bedroom designs, um, you know, that can be as big as 240 square metres or even larger. So there's really no lack of choice. After the break we visit the yard and check out the progress of the house and later we load up and hit the road. We're in Perth to follow the fascinating journey of the design and construction of a prefab house. From the construction here in the yard, this house will be transported 400 k's east to its remote location. Amazingly, due to the controlled environment of the yard, the whole build can take as little as 6 to 12 weeks, depending on the size of the house. Nat visits the yard to check on the progress of her brand new home. How's everything coming along with the house? 
Then everything's going really well. Um, the, we've actually put the slabs into position now. Uh, we've actually started the framework. So in terms of all of the various trades in our processes, things are progressing along really well. We're on, we're on schedule. Excellent. So Carl and Nat has bought the Pilbara, which is a TR home design, and it's built in steel, like all TR homes um, are built in steel. Obviously, I think the most um, obvious reason is that it's totally termite free. Unlike other products like timber that you have to pre-treat chemically, you actually don't need that with steel at all. So the so little critters actually hate steel. The other thing with steel, it's really strong and it's straight and true. Uh, so you've really got a very strong um, structure. Um, what um, stands out with True Core Steel, and obviously Blue Scope Steel um, make True Core Steel, that's our brand name, and you can actually distinguish it by the blue tint so that people can actually see they are getting the real True Core Steel. And it's manufactured in Australia for Australian conditions specifically. That's the other beauty of, of steel. It's, although it's very strong, it's very lightweight, so it can actually be transported. Uh, the framework has now been stood. Uh, we've actually now wrapped the home in the air cell, which also has the insulation properties to it as well. Uh, the cladding has actually started being installed on the outside of the home. So Stroma Building Products has had a relationship for 10 plus years with TR Homes. We support them 100% with all their colour bond needs and also all their flashing and all their metal requirements. Colourbond has just introduced six new colours to their range, or as they refer to as to their palette, and now have gone to 22, uh, 22 colour palette. Carl and Nat have chosen Surf Mist and Woodland Grey as their colour choices, which contrast really well together. They've also chosen Colourbond as their material to use because it's lightweight, it's uh, fast construction time, and also it stands the test of time. You couldn't do this with brick conventional construction methods, which is brick and tile and concrete, because basically that's done on site. So what you have to do is you have to get all your trades and per service providers to send the product down to site, and then trades go down and construct. And things like concrete, bricks and sand are quite scarce in these remote areas. So Colourbond is treated and painted in a factory and you never touch it again. Actually, it's recommended not to touch up Colourbond whatsoever. So how long do you think from now um, until lock-up stage? Until lock-up stage? Uh, we're probably only about a week away. Yeah. So um, that's the exciting thing is once the roof goes on, the cladding's on, the windows are already in. Yeah. So once we get the roof on, um, then there's, they, there just can't be any delays at all um, with regards to weather. Yeah, wow. That's, um, yeah, really quick. It's it is a very quick process and I suppose that's one of the, the benefits of the prefabricated house is that um, you know, it is a very quick process versus building on site when you're constantly battling trying to find trades on site. We have all of our trades here in yard and they flow from um, one job to the next and each process happens very seamlessly. James Hardy have been uh, traditionally a fibre cement manufacturer for many, many years. But uh, more recently, with a change in product mix, uh, we now have two product ranges which we're going forward into the future. We still retain our old fibre cement range, the old product range that we're all familiar with, with hardy planks. But our future in going forward, not only in this industry, but making a change happen in the marketplace is with our new Skyon range. The buildings that are, are built here initially may end up in Caratha or Port Hedland uh, in f some far-flung places. So the, the, the products on those buildings have got to be robust, they've got to be able to withstand a lot of impact, they've got to offer up uh, aesthetic looks. So most of our new products now can give you a pre-primed look, they can give you uh, advantages in how they're fixed, but they also transport very perfectly. Unlike the transportable industry in other states, which I've worked in, um, we have a concrete floor base. Now, we have visitors here in this state that come to this state, we show them our transportable industry and they're still trying to get their head around the fact that we can transport a core, a cement core base, put it on a site, doesn't matter where it is in WA, and it can look like any other house. And this is one of the reasons that now we're seeing the emergence of modular housing in Perth, which is a complete change from the old double brick environment. Perth is changing and James Hardy and people like TNR Homes are changing with it. Here it is, it's all happening. Um, why did you choose a prefab home? 
We first came into TNR and we were just really impressed with the, the whole service that they provided. Um, building in the country um, can be a bit of a hard task, so to be able to get a company to take care of everything from start to finish was yeah, really attractive to us. The home you've chosen, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, sure, it's the, it's the Pilbara, um, it's a four bedroom, two bathroom house. Um, good family home, um, open plan and lots of space. Is this your home you're building for yourself? Yeah, no, we won't be um, living in it, unfortunately. Okay. Um, yeah, my, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister and her four young children will be going into the house as our tenants. Belinda, um, I'm married to Belinda's brother, um, so originally from Continent, um, married a, a local farmer at Narrabeen, um, unfortunately has since separated, um, but loves, loves the town, loves the school. Um, four young children, so yeah, really, really wants to stay in Narrabeen. Well, you're a bit of a saint, really. I mean, it's an asset, but really, it's a bit of a love job, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, really, um, you always want to help your family out. So yeah, definitely the most important thing. And I've got, yeah, three young nephews and a, a young niece, and they think it's pretty cool that um, they're in the house living. Well, after the break, we load up and hit the road. And later, we revealed the finished home I'm keen to find out if it stacks up against a traditional style home. As the transport day gets closer, everything needs to be in order for a smooth delivery. We talked to Stephen Jones, who's been in the business of transporting houses for over 20 years. Uh, well, we've been in the transport industry for about 61 years now, uh, our company has. And approximately 20 years ago we decided to diversify into moving transportable homes. Our very first client was TR Homes. So in actual fact we've been working from now for 20 years. Nat and Carl have uh, purchased a house which consists of three modules. So when time comes to move it, what will happen is TR Homes will present us with the plans, we will analyse the plans, and then we'll work out what's needed with regards to main roads department, police department, western power, horizon power, uh, and other bodies. Once we've analysed that, we will put everything in process, obtain all the necessary permits. We also like to do a, a site inspection of the site so we know what to expect on the day. And we do a, uh, a check of the route for things like bridges, load trees. Uh, we deliver all over uh, Western Australia, uh, Northern Territory, South Australia, we do all the remote desert regions in Central Australia for Aboriginal communities and we uh, deliver houses to the islands up the north coast of Australia. Uh, some of those being a two day barge trip for our gear just to get to the island. Uh, so it's, it's quite exciting. We need specialised trailers mainly because a concrete floored building has to be lifted and carried in a certain way. So they're specially designed trailers but any truck as long as it has the, the tonnage rating can pull that trailer. Carl and Nat's house will be a 24 tonne section uh, approximately and it's a three section home. So it's a fair weight to, to have sitting on their pad. When the day finally comes, the scene is a sight to behold. So far everything's gone very well, yep, and um, you know we've had a good trip down and um, yeah the site is a very very good site, easy to work with. When we arrived on site here last night it was just before sunset, we were off the road so we would pull up close to the site or on the site 
We usually bring a bit of firewood or collect a bit of firewood, light a fire, have a bit of a yarn around the fire. I've been doing this job for over 40 years and uh, yeah, I've had a lot of interesting trips up north, uh, trips where I've been bogged for four days in the desert and uh, yeah, had to either get machinery or get uh, bog mats out and get ourselves out of the, bo out of the bog holes and get to site. to one side of the block a bit further to try and have the backyard under the gum trees out here. All right, Noah, we're going in the house, mate. You think we should leave that sand there and that can be the backyard? The kids would like it. So you're looking forward to moving in Belinda? Definitely looking forward to it. I've been very excited the last few days just thinking about it. Um, yeah, and just getting the suitcases unpacked. And yeah. So, nice where, so where, where are you staying at the moment? Uh, just friends and family at the moment. So okay. So you're pretty much myself. homeless, aren't you? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't she lovely? Aren't these guys lovely for, for providing a house oh, for absolutely. you? Absolutely. I've been very sport and very lucky. So. And a brand new house too. They haven't gone, they haven't gone second grade here. No, that's right. In Nothing fact, but the best for me. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to coming back. So, um, when can I come back and see the reveal? Yeah, well, you can come back and help with the landscaping if you like. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, a pretty, yeah. it's pretty isolated, yeah. but yeah, I'm up for a challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hopefully September, October. Okay. Um, yeah. Should be all done, so a couple of months. Awesome. After the break, we can finally reveal the finished house. Nat and Carl needed to construct a house for Carl's sister Belinda in this small remote town in Western Australia. The isolated rural location meant a prefab construction would be the easiest and most cost effective way to build. This house was built in Perth and transported here to Narrambeen. The landscaping has been done and the owners have moved in. Belinda takes us on a tour of her brand new house. Well, this is pretty impressive. I mean, I can't believe that effectively this home was built in a factory and it arrived here on truck. Oh no, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? What, what they can do these days. Yeah. So mm. what do you think? Oh, I love it. Yeah? I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. So the third module behind us here is pretty much the bedrooms, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's basically the kids' area. So three bedrooms in there and my bedroom's off on the other side I of the know. house. So you've got an oasis over there. It's like yeah. your own little um, world. Yeah, it's quite big too, so. Recently you ran into a bit of um, hardship, didn't you, really? Yeah, well, I guess this time last year I was a little bit homeless, so. <laughs> a little bit homeless? A little bit homeless, yeah. Sort of, um, the rental I had was sold. Yeah. So, and then I think I had about two weeks to move out and there was nothing to go into, so. That's when my poor brother and sister-in-law got stuck with me for a little while. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're living with them. Yeah. And is that where they got the idea of, of um, well, I mean, this is also an investment property for them as well. Yeah. But really they did it for you, so yeah. you have somewhere to live. Effectively, yeah, that was their, their main reason. Well, they probably just wanted me out of their house. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, we're on, we're on schedule. Um, it took 10 weeks to build the home in the yard in our facility and it took seven weeks on site, so seven, 17 weeks in total. Uh, totally on, on time, no delays at all, um, and it's uh, now completed. So Belinda's really excited and really wrapped. The home looks terrific, and now her and her four kids can settle down to living a, a happy life moving forward. So what's the attraction here? Like, I mean, why, why now and then? I guess we sort of grew up here in the wheat belt, so. We haven't really gone too far, have we? Yeah, that's right. We farm here, so yep. here, yeah, business, family business. How's the farm? Yeah, really good. We've had a another an above average season, so right. we're we're right in the middle of our grain harvest as we speak. Oh wow! Which is why Carl I'm... can't be here, unfortunately. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a very very busy time for us. 
I guess what we want to know now is what did it end up costing to build the actual house? Yep, so I think we've come in at um, just under the, between 360 and the 370 mark. Okay. So yeah, originally um, house, 316,000. So you went over budget a bit, but not, it um, wasn't TR Homes that went over budget, it was you that went over budget. Yeah, that's right, yeah, we, <laughs> you always think you put a couple of extras in and then yeah, you come up with some more ideas, so yep. but, yeah, we're really glad that we've, we've put all the extras in that we have, so. Yeah. Which is fantastic, and I'm just um, I'm really sold on the whole prefab idea. I think yeah. I just think it's great, yeah. especially when you're in such a remote place. Yes, it? yeah, it's, yeah, it's um, quite convenient. It's been a really good experience. Belinda, thank you so much for having us back. Welcome, Gary. Thanks, thanks for, for coming us to your house and your house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. Thanks so much. Yeah, no worries. Well, there you have it. As our world progresses, the way we deliver a basic human necessity, such as shelter, is continuing to evolve. Prefab is not only a means to an end, it's a stylish, modern and sustainable way to live. The applications of prefab construction and transport are many, so the possibilities are endless. So if you're in the market for a new home, start dreaming.